Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. If you've been hurt in a road accident that wasn't your fault, you should really talk to G4 Claims first. Unlike road accident solicitors, we don't charge you for our services, which could see you better off. To keep 100% of your compensation, have a chat with Nicole and the team. You'll be glad you did. Search online for G4 Claims. Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Selic the Thunder podcast. We're on to episode 49, and there's only one player that comes to mind when you think of number 49. Mm-hmm. That dusty baller. Unfortunately. <laughs> don't, be, don't be disrespectful. A, yeah, Celtic, we'll a Celtic legend, perhaps, but yeah, that's that's well, absolutely number forty nine, James Forrest. There you go. That's today's episode. Um, we will talk about James Forrest a little bit later on in the episode, um, but let's talk about um, Celtic and let's talk about a lot of things to do with last night's performance, to do with the weekend as we build ever closer to what is going to be one of the biggest games of the season. Today, I am joined by. Two people once more. To my left, as always, it is Mr. Ryan McGinley, who, for the first time ever, is not... It's getting old, it's not rough, it's you. Yeah, it's I, I don't know how I was going to work that there. I completely <laughs> messed that up what I wanted to do. But Kieran Old is usually sitting to the far left there, rough mm. as anything, getting slaughtered in the comments for it. But today, it's you. Yeah, it's me. Well, on, a, on, okay a, on a Thursday? I know. Out on a school night. Wow. Wow. That, it? wow. Grace has called me. and I was told. Like, and you couldn't, let, and you couldn't let them down. Exactly. Um, £12 pound of venom. We only, we only bought two of them. Thank God. No, only only the two. Only the two. Yeah, I mean, if you had more than two, it'd be game over. We've very, been through very, this. It's game over when you start with venom. Very, very true. But I'm happy to be here. Did you have a fun night? I did have a fun night. I had a wee McDonald's at the end, so ah, I can't really always complain. Good. Got that's home, always good. Walked home. You from, walked home? Well, from the train. Oh, I, thought you, I thought you meant you walked from Glasgow <laughs> to Coatbridge. <Cope. laughs> <laughs> yeah, about two stone lighter, honestly. Right. Um, no, it was a good. It was a good night. Good one. Happy days. Happy days. And, and <laughs> to the left of him, it's Callum Craig. It's your first show of twenty twenty two, Callum. Uh, as indeed. You happy to like, be back? Eh? Uh, uh, it feels like ages since the last. I know. Time. I can't remember the last time we did one. Christ, I mean, before the cup final and that anyway, I think it might have been like around about episode 45 or so. So it does, in, in terms of numbers, it doesn't seem like that long ago, but there was a long break in between yeah. and it's just, it's nice to have you back. Thanks for having us. I mean, it's nice to get rid of Kieran Old, you know, he's got an episode without him. Peace and quiet, you I know. Don't in the comments, hate when I'm on, because often he's here. So it's, <laughs> you've just got, for him. You've just got to uh, replace his kind of... Um, his rants with your own sort of rants. Anything you like to rant about? I've played about James Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll come to it. We'll come to it. Um, thank you to G4 Claims as always for having us in the studio. Our sponsors, our, um, our hosts, and this lovely, lovely place. Be sure to check them out uh, in their Twitter or website. But let's get on to talking about Celtic because Celtic, in one of the biggest games of the season thus far, delivered on the big stage. They went to Tyne Castle. They they wrote. Their, they, they, they made made sure they went and won this time, um, and they, they they wrote the wrongs. They righted the wrongs. Is that how would you say that? They they made the wrongs right from that defeat earlier on in the season when we were defeated there um, back in the the opening day. Ryan, it was of mass importance last night. We went there and won the game, and, and, and there's a lot to dissect about that performance. Um, first half, second half. But overall, we've done what was most important and, and we won that game and what could be a defining moment come the end of the season. I mean, you, you look at the fixtures that we had um, coming back from the winter break, that one really, really stood out to me. I think Arsenal's always so difficult to go to. So to go there and get the win um, and to play really well, especially in the first half, I know second half we kind of tailed off of it. But that, that was just due to tiredness, I would say. But I mean, the first half, some of our football was absolutely phenomenal. The Hearts couldn't live with us and they couldn't live with certain players in that park, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, but I, I think the difference between the end of July, which is when we played them at Tyne Castle the first mm-hmm. time, and now, the, the change is just incredible. You look at the team, Callum, last night that was that was fielded the start and the living and the difference between, you know, the end of July, as Ryan said, and, and last night, 
while also considering we were down McGregor, we were down Maeda, we were down Kyogo, we were down Rogic, and we were down Idiguchi, we dealt with the pressure incredibly well last night, but I think it's a huge testament to, to the development under Ange Postacoglu over the last few months. Definitely. That's I was just trying to get up my phone there, like the team from we played them back in July, and or also some of the players there did obviously feature last night. It's night and day, the performance levels, but like... You look back at us, like, some of the players are absolutely like, blown out of their arse back in the game in July. Mm-hmm. Also, I get the point, they're still just easing into the season. But then last night, it looked as if we could have, personally, I felt, kept playing for another 90 minutes. One of the players just kept running through. Yep. Kept, everybody had done their man-to-man performance. One that was a special surprise for me would have been near beat on. I said to you in the morning on the way through, after he got booked, mm-hmm. and I said, sure, there's a sending off here. And I thought, <laughs> I put a five run Devlin for Hearts. Like uh, it took off five minutes later. I'm like, right, thankfully I left that. I thought, I'll go stick a five run beat on. Aye. But I mean, thankfully, managed to keep his seed in. Done as a good. I think that's big for Near Beat on because, um, you know, you get uh, Near Beat on, who, of course, over the past few seasons has had a lot of big moments where. He's crumbled under the pressure, mm-hmm. he's made mistakes uh, and he's seen himself sent off in certain games. You know, we have Rangers and Mitchell and it come to mind and he's just let himself down, he's let the team down. But last night, you know, he showed a glimpse of that but he, he kind of held himself together a bit better. Right? Yeah, I know he gave definitely. away that penalty and we'll come on to the penalty but I know he gave that away but he was the captain last mm-hmm. night and I think, you know, in that moment where he could have got flustered, where he could have done something wrong, and where it could have went tits up for him, he, 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 you know, he recognised the position he was in last night, he recognised what he had to do for the team, and I think that's another thing in, in sort of character development that Ange has brought to certain players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought he had a really good game last night, I thought he was very stable, just playing as that number six, he allowed mm. Hitati and o- O'Reilly, who were both brilliant, to, to go forward and do their own thing, and he would just stay there and help out the defence, which was absolutely brilliant. I think when you put him in his proper position as a holding midfielder, he puts in good performances game mm. after game, this is it's it's not like rocket science. You play a player where he's supposed to play, and he, he'll play a lot better than when you when you shoehorn him into a into a bad position for mm-hmm. him, which is centre half. Centre half. I mean, I, he, he can do a job against lower level teams, but I, I just do not want to see him as a centre half again in a big game. Yeah, um, centre mid is his position. At the end of the day, he yeah. so he controls that area. He, he does. He, nah. he just he's like a general. He's just. That, that's his space he doesn't really move from he do, he, I mean he does go in those runs sometimes but that's his space and he knows that he's got more creative players in front of him so he can just stay there and do his job which is absolutely brilliant for the team well, let's talk about the first half and let's talk about, because there's a lot of ranting and raving and, and everything we have to do there's a lot of players that deserve a sort of podcast oh, that, dedicated the to themselves so let's let's just get all the positives out of the way let's be happy because I, I suppose when the 90th minute you know watching that last 10 minutes last night Callum it was, it was tough it was nervy it was really um you know, reminiscent of, of days gone by, you know, it threw me right back to like 2007, eight times <laughs> when every game was like, oh, come on, get this over and done yeah. with. Um, but Cal, when the final whistle went, there's just that, that immense joy, isn't there? Ah, uh, definitely, I think, <clears throat> as you said, it's just the sort of typical Celtic way over recent years, mm-hmm. we're always going to grind out hard results, we'll make it hard for the fans to watch, but as you said, it's always worth it come the end of it. Aye. You said to go, I'll be to time, Cass, on take away the three points especially in a game such as big as that we'll look at over the rest of the season Aye. how that could end us up it's massive first half Ryan where, where do we even begin where do I begin a love story of how great a love can be I don't know where you begin who, who, where do we start who do we who I, do mean, you? I mean to be fair the first 10 minutes I thought we were really struggling to get our own half ha- ha- that was one thing I wanted to bring up um, Hearts came out the gates I think the first 5-10 mm-hmm. minutes and played really really well and, it, and I was like oh, no here we go I man. know I was the same I was, I was like, like get me another drink in typical <laughs> <difficult one." laughs> I was like typical time castle game we're going to come mm-hmm. here and we're going to struggle and it's going to be left to the last 10 minutes we're hoping to and hanging on for a goal but we weathered the storm and we've done it pretty well I thought I think after 5-10 minutes yeah we really did we were trying to work out Hearts how they were playing I think Katati as well that uh, for Hitati and O'Reilly especially, they've never played in a game with that much intensity before, I don't think. This, nah. would, this would have been a whole other level. And you've seen them, they, they were knackered by the end of the game. But once they figured out how to play against Hearts, there was only one winner, basically, mm-hmm. in that midfield. They totally dominated. Um, once, once, we, once we eased into the game... Um, it was their game in the first half. Be, you know, the, 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 when you, as you were saying, as we eased into the game... I know it changed in the second half and we'll come on to that and we'll talk about maybe what went wrong or whatnot. but 
you know, the way we played for the remainder of that first half after the sort of first five, ten minutes, I was thinking to myself, you know, this could be three, four, five today, the way we were playing. We really did ease into the game with a real comfort. Mm-hmm. Um Swagger about us as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. They, they Good believed that they believed their hype, which I, I was totally all right with because they were showing it on the pitch. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, just a, a shout out to Jota as well, best player in Scotland. Oh, no by a mile. No one's near him. No, no, no player here or, or incoming <laughs> is better than Jota. <laughs> yep. No one. Um, let's talk about two players that were brought up very, very briefly there, and let's give them the the sort of podcast they deserve I'm talking yeah. about the two men in the middle of the park and let's start Phenomenal. let's start with Rio Hatati. let's start with him his goal last night um, absolutely sensational Callum your thoughts on Rio last night just the same as his debut it was phenomenal Aye. I think it was it's the fact that how constant he is he wants to go and take the ball and he'll drive he'll, the passes he pings I'm like how do you even hit it it looks so awkward but it comes off perfect. Like, and come half time after he scores that wonder goal, I don't know how many edits I've seen, but it was like Naka's goal against them, mm-hmm. and then that, like, one above each other. It's, yes. oh, it's just ridiculous. But it's the fact that how much do we pay for him? 1.5 1. 1. So, mil. 1.5 mil. And that might seem as if I'm jumping ahead myself two games in, but it seems if it's going to be worth every penny and more. See, see what the decimal point is for Hitati 1.5 to 15. I think he'll be worth that in a couple of months already. Aye. He's that good. Aye. It, 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 He's good. You know, one thing I wanted to bring up is, Calm, you were saying there, you were like, you don't want to, you, you might be jumping ahead of yourself. But there's some players you look at and you go, no, I'm no jumping the gun. No. This exactly. is a player, and that's the feeling I get watching him. Yeah, he, he excites me. He's like everywhere. He just excites me. Like the way he, Ryan, you made a point last week, or you made several points last week on Twitter about who you were trying to compare him with and such. But I, I just, after that goal last night, I was like, it's like Paul Scholes, Andrea Pirlo, Xavi Hernandez, fucking. We got, all Paul, these, we got Paul Lambert with that strike as well. Stan just, Petrov, mm-hmm. and just all these players mixed into one. I, 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 he's, he's kind of the perfect player we've been looking for, mm-hmm. I think. See if he puts a wee bit more muscle on him, he could be unstoppable in this league. I mean, he already is. He already is quite a force in this league after two games, but if he puts a bit more muscle and he will dominate teams. Nah. He's the sky's the limit for this boy. And and you see you see Ange talking about him, or you hear Ange talking about him. He's saying he's so driven. He's he knows where he wants to be. Um, I, I'm I'm really really excited to see what he does in the next season or two for us. Yeah, um, he, he's a player that I think is going to be big in that game next week, but. We'll, we'll Take it a game at a time. We've got Dundee United to come first. Um, Craig Gordon, it, it, it was a fantastic strike last night from Rio Hitati. I want to take absolutely nothing away from that. It's a brilliant goal. But do you know do you think Gordon's effort to save it is just one of the is the epitome of why we let him go and why it, it kind of disproves everybody that says, oh, he should, Celtic should never let him go. It's like he loses his arms. I mean, we said we. I think we might have spoke about it in Xbox last night. I'm not sure if you were on at this point, Cam. But I was saying, like, remember in Europe, we would just forget how to use his arms constantly. Aye. That's what happens last night. I feel. Right. <clears throat> it just, you just don't know what he's doing. That like, I just like, up and hit it, and I'm like, oh. And the next time I watch in the back, I'm like, how does he know save that? Aye. We see the replays as well. It's like it's the that, replays that does it for me because on like real time viewing, I was like, I didn't get a shit about what Gordon's doing. But when they played the highlight back four or five times, I'm like. Why is Gordon like? Ah, uh, this. Uh, it's <laughs> it pull, so, no, it pulls him away, but it just doesn't fall. Feels to extend, yeah. right? mm-hmm. I think he's going for a, a save for the cameras, and it, this this point was mentioned in the Celtic Exchange. I was listening to them in the way in. He's trying to he's trying to make a save for the camera and makes a complete arse of it. Aye. Um, he gets his trousers pulled down by his hat, <laughs> and you know. Hey, listen, he's wearing shorts, not trousers. Aye. <laughs> aye. Aye. You better respect more things. That's all I'm saying. Has <laughs> a uh, what, what, what's that? What's that saying? He's, he's cards marked. His cards marked. Aye, his card is marked. <laughs> I just don't like Craig Gordon. So yeah, we, no, we've we've gathered that from the, <laughs> the opening forty nine episodes of our show. Um, oh, there's my knee away. Um, oh, I should, I should say, Rio Hitati as well. Last night, I think you know. You've got to admire the fact that this is something I've not really heard spoke about. The fact Rio Hitati's came in now. He's played two games for this club. And um, both games he's played in entirely different midfield threes. Mm-hmm. And he's looked spot on in both of them. He's looked like he's just fit right. You know, first game was him, McGregor and and um, Rogic. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yesterday, him, O'Reilly and, and Beaton. Perfect. Versatility. Like, Versatility, I suppose, is a massive part of it. But, you know, there's always that worry um, that players come into a club and they have a bed in period or they struggle to adapt. 
Cam, I don't know about you, but every signing so far, I think we've made, and we'll come on to talk about the newest one of those signings in a moment, but every signing that I feel like we've made, I feel like, as Anne's just, I don't know, they just seem to adapt perfectly, and Mio's one that I think standing out as maybe one of the pillars of that so far. Definitely, I don't think there's been an Anne signing that I've looked at and I thought, nah, it's, they're, they're not Maybe some of the, the younger ones, you know? But, ah, but like, I mean, I suppose, first team first players, team like, players come in, like, everybody's come in, of. They'll all fight for that place. Mm-hmm. They've all been phenomenal. Everyone like mm. that's come in straight away. They've hit the ground running. Aye. I don't think there has been any players that's needed that bed in that period. I think. I mean, Juranovic just came in, done brilliantly. <laughs> Starfield. Phenomenal. Starfield had a couple of, at the start, but then he was right. And, and Hart's been great. Everybody, I just feel like he's been great coming in. Kyogo, Maida, the Gucci looked decent against Alwa too. Are, the ones that are and signings, and we know are absolutely Aye. and yep. signings. I've done well. Mm-hmm. The ones mm-hmm. that have been signed by the James board, McCarthy. He's just he's not gonna cut it, is he? Uh, he's just not gonna okay. cut no, it. No, not at all. I think I mean if you're not ready, if you're not physically ready, you've been you've been in since what is it? He end of July. In July, yeah. If you're not ready when it comes it's coming towards February next week, come on. Uh, it's that's, never gonna come. It's never gonna come. I I just don't see where in the pecking order he would work his way at who he'd work above because there's no one there right now he works himself above. Because there's a new centre mid on the block. And there's someone else we need to talk about. And Ryan, I've been you've been waiting for this and you've been dying for this. I don't even feel like I've given you enough to speak about Hitati. Is there anything you want to say about Hitati before we go and um, move on? I, I just think he's absolutely phenomenal. Handsome I boy as well. He's a very handsome boy. Yeah. Um, I've got a thing in this podcast for bringing up the looks of players, you know. <laughs> you've got to respect it. You've got to respect it's it. It's living. It's, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's like supporting mates, isn't it, you know? That's it. You see your lassies support each other all the time. Go girl. I mean, come on, look at <laughs> you know? it. We've got, we've got Jota. Jota. We've got a uh, Hatati. Right. We've got O'Reilly. Yeah. We've got Joe Rogic, Hart. We've got Starfelt. Joe. Starfelt. Oh, yeah. Did you give Starfelt a bash? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> right. Let's, let's, no, let's talk no. about. I'm kidding, I'm let's kidding. talk about O'Reilly because he made his debut last night, Ryan, and you'd think he'd been in the team all season. Yep. He's he's a special player. Mm-hmm. Eight chances he created last night. One assist. Um, looked really, really confident, and this is a, a point that you could make about Hitati and O'Reilly. You know when a player's good when he's got extra time on the ball. Like other other players look as if they're getting closed down all the time. This boy's got time on the ball. He's he's got finesse. He's a. Uh, I can see why MK Dons were so gutted to lose him because he looks like one hell of a player, and I think he's only going to get better. He did. I think both. I don't know. Both calves cramped up. Um, that was what he was saying after the game, yep. but it was just due to the intensity of this game. I hope, and the the, the good thing about um, O'Reilly is that we only need to wait two days until we watch him again. I'm buzzing to see him again. Yeah, you'd imagine he'll start against Dundee United. Um, but Callum, th- this was a massive game for him, not only because it was his debut, but we we we'll probably we're, we're probably relying on. Um, Matt O'Reilly when it comes to the, the big game next week because Rogic will be away um, McGregor we still don't know we'll be back yet we'll touch on that maybe later on on the show and we don't know about Eddie Gucci yet either you'd imagine O'Reilly's got to start so I think for, for his confidence and certainly for the fans believing in him it was important they got a big performance last night and we got that definitely I think one of the things I'm most happy about is i never seen any of these like compilation videos and such before we signed them. Mm-hmm. So it was, a, it was a complete fresh Gone signing. Me. I hadn't seen anything whatsoever. And that's why I was so impressed with him as well. Because I didn't know where the market would be. But for mm-hmm. him to set it that high on his debut is ridiculous. Like, I've seen somebody put a tweet up and said, oh, an Englishman making their debut at Tynecastle. No, <laughs> <thing. laughs> it came in the exact same. A phenomenal debut last night for him. And it looks, just, he de- it looks like he's uh, got a lot of initiative. and I, I feel like he was always... Kind of one step ahead, you yep. know. He was always sort of you know, that ties it. No, that ties on what McGinley was saying. Like he's got that extra second on the ball. I assume doing that step ahead. Is this somehow he takes that touch and this is this space that just creates room? Mm-hmm. But he's got that extra. But it's, when's the last time I had a player that was like that? Really? I mean, you could Bring say, you know, we've had we have like I feel like he could be compared maybe minorly to, to the likes of Rogic, but you know, that's a younger guy. And Armstrong so, had it as well. Armstrong a wee bit maybe, but you know, to bring in somebody like that who I think can ultimately be better, you know, it's, it's massive, it's huge. Or one and a half million pounds as well to pick up yet another player who's picked up man of the match in their debut. Mm-hmm. That's two weeks in a row, two games in a row. Sorry, and that's the thing. If, going back to Hatati, Hatati could have easily won man of the match as well. Natati could have. Mm-hmm. Um, really could O'Reilly have. was just brilliant. I mean, when's the last time we seen a cross like that going at the box for Yakimakis's goal? Aye. Probably Kieran Tierney. 
you just throw it in the, those ones that just goes along rather than actually getting pumped into the box. Yeah. It, it, so impressed. Yeah, I was really impressed. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more of him. And it's now we've got such a good headache. I actually, I'm going to see if I can pull up. Do you know what I wish we had on this podcast? You ever watch the podcast and I'm like, pull it up, pull, pull it up. And they get some, <laughs> some, a wee producer sitting mm-hmm. off the side and they get them to do all the work and, and all the rest of it. We need to do that. We need to get something point. I believe I should have it accessible to my hand right now. If I didn't like the tweet, then it's my own fault because if I liked it, I'll be able to find it. What I think was it? it was a tweet basically about our depth. I've definitely not liked it. It's gone. It was about... What like, is that? You've liked, right? Oh, you oh, listen oh, now. Oh, listen oh. here. Listen. You shut up. Um, <laughs> I'm going on East Twitter just now. <laughs> there was nothing there. He was taking the piss. Christ. If people can, do you think I'm that daft? People can access my likes whenever they want. Nah, true. <laughs> Why would I like anything daft? Nothing to hide, mate. Nothing I've to hide. got a separate account for that. <laughs> 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 um, no, but anyway, um, you know there was, a, there was a tweet about like our, our first and second team, like, and it was there was ah, not, there was a, it was a tweet about the team that didn't play last night, like yes, nobody was involved, yes, yes. and it was like McGregor obviously in the middle with Rogic and the Gucci, Turnbull, Turn, Turnbull's there, and, and Welsh and Julian. Ralston, Welsh, Julian, Scales, Barkas, and goals. <laughs> I mean, it's just think, but. That's crazy how we've got to this point. Granted, the bench once again wasn't great last night with the position we're in, but when you've got a fully fit squad there, what a turnaround, Calum, that Ange's done here. Definitely, I think, as you're saying, it's the thing with the bench. Hank, was it you that put the tweet up and said, like, RIP, decent bench, like that? Like, But then it had been a while since we'd had a decent bench. But even at that, as you said, having a fully fit squad last night, you would have relied on the bench to either waste time or, as like, we're already at, we both Aye. cast cramp up. But I mean, he said it himself, he's not kicked the ball in a couple of weeks, so it's, it's expected. That happens, it happens. Aye, expected. And hopefully, you know, plays against Dundee United, then those sort of issues are completely gone by next Aye. week anyway. You're not expecting anything like that because you've had 180, well, nearly 180 minutes of football on your yeah. legs. Um, a couple of players I want to talk about last night, a couple of points before we talk about the second half and, and maybe how we, we, we performed in, in that half of football. Um, yeah, let's talk about... Uh, Somebody else, Gian, Giannis, Giannis, why am I saying Giannis? That's because we were talking about, that's because we were talking about um, basketball. basketball before we started. Uh, your big man, Giacomacus, up front, I thought he was brilliant. So did I. I thought he was really, really good. And, and once again, do you know what, just seeing him smite, and it's like, part, I put up a tweet last night and I said, seeing him smile makes me, seeing, seeing him score makes me smile. Yeah. And part of me is like, well, it's true, it does, but part of me is like, it feels sort of condescending in a way. Mm-hmm. It feels like I'm, I'm treating him as if he's this sort of like, competition winner. Uh, shouldn't he be in the team? I know, he but, was the top goal scorer in the I know, I know, and it's, like, but it's because of how many people turned their back on the guy and dismissed him that I feel like I need to be like that with him. I feel mm-hmm. like, because I know he's good. I know he's going to be a player for us. There was just so many people who were willing to say no because he missed a penalty one time. I know, he missed the penalty and then that guilt age chance right at the end. But I've always known that there's a player there. We just need to give him time, give him time to adapt mm. to the new country, first of all. And then I think he was saying that he'd lost something like eight kilos since he since he'd, uh, since he he joined Celtic. And I think you can see that. He looks a lot better. Right. He looks a lot more mobile. And I think he's seen every, a, a lot of parts of it. Yakimakis that were great tonight. He's, he, not tonight, uh, last night. I mean, the, the back heel goal was brilliant. Yeah. But, right. I mean, the work he put in in, in the final 10 minutes, that, that'll, go, that'll go under the radar. But, you know, we, we notice these sort of things and that goes a long way to getting the victory. Yeah, it, it, Calum, last night I think a lot of people were talking about how in the sort of last five, ten minutes how vital he was and, and kind of holding the ball. It, it's good that we have a striker that can do that now. Somebody that can hold the ball. I, I love Kyogo for the hashi, don't get me wrong. And I love Dyson Maida. Two completely different players to Yakimakis, though I think he can bring in that, that quality that we've not really had in a striker, I think. I think a lot of people maybe expected it with a Yeti, didn't happen, but now we have it in him, I think. Uh, I think the last, obviously Edward done it a wee bit, but it was more Dembele mm. for me. Aye. Dembele going just taking that ball, like, obviously yeah. the clip of the 2-1 game at Ibrox, like just holding the ball in a minute with ease, like, but the way you feel confident now to play the ball up to him, because he will just hold up and he'll wait for the players to come on. Mm-hmm. But as you said, like, I'm buzzing for the guy. Because I see the amount of people that just dismissed him straight away because of that penalty miss. But I'm hoping he does come on maybe a game. I think it's the Celtic Daz are the ones that take the most convincing there. Uh, and the finish last night is brilliant. You can't take it out. That is incredible finishing. Yeah, that's not one you could push in Dembele S. Exactly, Dembele S. That wee flick. Like people might say, like, oh, it's it's a bit of luck or whatnot. That's quality. That's a, that's a goal scorer. That's a finisher's ability. This is a top scorer for the Eredivisie last season, you know what I mean? Takes it with the right, the, the, 
he takes with his, I think it's with his left foot, but mm-hmm. if he takes it with his right foot, it hits Suter. So he makes the right decision. Yep. And um and going for that shot. And then fair play to him, he gets his rewards. Yep, he does. Um two, and but, two goals in two games. Yep, exactly. And when and you know the big the big talking point for for, for Giacomakis before those two games was he needs to step up. Well he has. He's, He's scored up. two goals mm-hmm. in two games. So I don't know. I'm hoping that most Celtic fans are beginning to be convinced. Yeah. But, I, you know, I, I think that it's annoying because, say he does do well against Dundee United, but then against Rangers, he maybe doesn't have the greatest of games. People are going to go backwards on him again. I feel like he's someone you've got to be patient with. Someone who's going to come good. I like him. I really do. Starfield's got that as well. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter what he does. If he has, like, he could have 10, 10, game, 10 really, really good games. If he used to make one mistake... The, the pitch folks are out it's, and I don't, it's I don't crazy get it. it's absolutely crazy it's a lovely transition because I said I wanted to talk about a couple of players before we moved on to the second half and such mm. Starfield was the next one what did you just make him last night I thought he was alright uh, he what missed one header what and you people are vilifying him uh, what do you think I had done okay I think no and that annoyed me was obviously the push that leads to their goal mm-hmm. I think just try and challenge it you don't need to go for that push you can just jump it along so you mm-hmm. don't need to win the header just yep. nudge him away for it and also leads to um, that Fucking embarrassment by the Mackay <laughs> taking the ball. Nah, that haircut's fucking shocking. Okay, oh, so he takes the ball and then it's moves it. Obviously, it. like I, I was very surprised with Nielsen's comments towards the goals. He said, yeah. "Look at both goals. Like, their second goal offside. Their first goal offside. Can you argue it? Aye. Simple as that." But being I, reasonable. Wow. That, exactly. I was, I was very stunned. shocked. I was stunned. Even the praise he gave us, like obviously, I know we've moved past that part. But so the first opening ten minutes, thought we'd done well. He said, but the next thirty-five minutes, we just. Not sat off them, also they played well. Mm. It was letting them move through with ease. Aye. So I'm very surprised with him. I, I, I had a massive debate with Callum McKenzie last night. Callum McKenzie gone but not forgotten. Once once a, a strong member of this show. <laughs> Maybe back one day, we'll see. Um, but I had a big debate with McKenzie last night when I was done my video and I went on and he asked me the question. He went, what do you think of Starfield tonight? I thought it was brilliant. No, not brilliant. I was like, I thought it was, it was, job. It was good. A few, couple of big tackles, really big interception. Thought it was thought it was solid. And Callum gave it straight away. No, he was mince. And I was like, come on, man. I was like, and I seen that debate coming a lot on Twitter last night, but it's just, I'm so bored with it around yeah, Starfield. I think that people have made their opinions clear. You either like him or you don't. I think it's your opinion. You're entitled to it. But I, 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 I'm getting fed up of just seeing it constantly. You see the, a certain Twitter account get ratioed last night for saying that Welsh is better than Starfield. Like that argument needs to stop. I said I don't. I, I, I'm assu- I've not seen it. I, I don't want to cause beef for that or anything, <laughs> but I mean, it, it's yep. just a poor opinion. I think. I think it's a poor opinion. I don't know who put it up. I've no idea. So considering, considering Welsh was at fault for the goal against Dalawa. Aye, aye. We'll see. But aye, um, I'm, it's I'm, one of those ones. I just it? I don't agree with that at all. No, I really, either. I really, really don't. Um, Carl Vickers was phenomenal again. I think Carl Vickers was good again. But he's I'll, always good. He's always good. He's I mean, a, we must sign him. He's always at least a seven out of ten. Aye. He never goes below that level. And one last player that we definitely need to talk about from last night. For, oh, but there's two. I, there's so many performances to break down here. I feel like we're just going through the whole team if we talk about this. Too bad that we've not really talked about Jota that much. Oh Christ! That's another one we're talking about. Fuck me. We'll cut. Yeah, we'll cut. Yeah, we'll cut. We'll cut. We'll cut. We'll go through. I'm just going to go through the order. That's a decent podcast. We're just breaking down everybody's performances. Yeah. Um, Greg Taylor. He's, he's just not good enough. I, I, I want it's to be pro, I want. I, I want to support him. Like, I'm best, I'm de- I mean, <laughs> I want him to do well, but I think skills will be in on Saturday. I think honest. so. Yeah. Callum, what did you make of Taylor last night? I think the most impressive thing he done was about going back up Jota and <laughs> Devlin tangled his leg. That was it. Oh, nah, I think he's, four leg lock. he's one of the players who just it doesn't offer anything for me. He's mm. just there. He's more like a competition only, winner. It's just the only thing he brings is his athleticism. I think because he can do it for ninety minutes. Now I know he's he's not at maybe the the required level, but he can keep it going for ninety minutes. He doesn't right. really burn out. He just keeps it going. Um, but no, if if he if he's to be the first the first choice left back, then he's going to need to improve quite a bit. It's just yeah, he's, it's, we've spoken about this so many times that this is a big big six months for him. I think to determine whether or not we sign a left back maybe in the next transfer window. It's not off to a great start for me, honestly. And I, I wanted yeah, I do I want to do I, I want to get behind here and I want all other players to succeed. But it's just you know I I get tired of pretending with things. It was the same with Mikey Johnson. There's only so long I can sit and go. Oh, I believe and I have faith and I want me to do well and blah blah blah. Because there's a point where you just go right, okay, he's not good enough. That it does, it happens, it comes. And I thought that was last night for me. I was like, he's just not good enough. 
you know, Hearts is the best team in the, outside the top two, and if he can't do it against them in a big, big game, I, I, w- I don't think he was abysmal, don't get me wrong, I don't think he had the worst game in the world, but it was just moments in the game where I was like, oh, you know, if we had a Juranovic on the, the left-hand side, it wouldn't be happening. I think you really do see the difference in the fullbacks. Yep. Aye. Even, actually, in terms of depth... It's a bit lopsided now, I think, because we're just not as strong in the left back position as we are right back, and that's that's all due to Ralston doing so well and Juranovic just being a bit of a baller. Aye. Um, so I would I would have liked to have seen players that were of, of the same quality on the left hand side. I mean, it's it's clear that Ange really really likes Taylor, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to need to stick with him. And Scales is sort of like a long term project, I would say. But, um, aye, it's. You, you expect better from a Celtic left back, to be honest. I, I, I think that, yeah, I got a, a lot of people digging me up last night, um, and saying like, "Oh, negativity." So I understand it, and I don't want it to be. It's been a, such a positive season. I don't want to let negatives overrule it all. But like, even there was that point last night. He shot up in a fantastic tackle. That was like, ah, that's what I tell you. I was like, Aye. "Fuck me!" Jota you know, a better defender than Taylor. Game changed. We took Jota off. It the did. Back. That is when the game changed for me. That is when the game changed. Let's, have taken let's him talk off. about the second half. Let's talk about the second half. You, you say you shouldn't have taken him off. Do you not? Do you not maybe see the precautionary side of it? Perhaps not when the game's at two nothing. The, the, the game is still on at 2-0. Mm-hmm. I would much rather keep our best players on and get a third. And then maybe take... 3-0, the game's over. 2-0, yeah. you give them a chance. And you give them an even bigger boost when you take Jota off. Like All of a sudden, who Michael Smith, who shot it, who went off the park yep. because he was getting absolutely tore apart. He was getting violated by Jota on, mm-hmm. that, on that one. Um, when we took Jota off, it was like, oh, that's that's the main threat gone. And we weren't really replacing him with anything. Mm-hmm. Who, who was it that came on for Jota, actually? Was it a bad or? It was a bad... No... Was it a badder? Aye, ah, it was. It was a badder, wasn't it? I've, I've just, I've just completely. A badder came on the right and Forrest switched over to the left. Aye, Aye. Sure that was the problem. A, a badder is, is definitely a very, very good player. But when Forrest went to the, the left and you had Taylor and Forrest, we were getting absolutely nothing. It, it was ab- there was um, there was no power down that left hand side whatsoever. Um, very, very lopsided, and it, it could have cost us more. And mm. I guess we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, what is it we've got, we've got to talk about? Let's talk about Forrest. Let's let's talk about Forrest. Let's talk about Forrest. I think he's done. What about you? I mean, you. Me I <laughs> like, you've been saying that since 2016. <laughs> Mate, I've been saying it since fucking 2014. I've <laughs> never liked him. Right. And don't get me wrong, he's done phenomenal stuff for the club. A good player in his time, but he's just he's just not up there, is he? I, I think, think it's cause how well Jot is doing as well, but mm-hmm. it shows you like you know, having night and day. What we should have, as to what they're actually having to use, it's aye. I, I've I've said it numerous times over the forty nine episodes that we've done. I know I've just mentioned forty nine James Forrest, but the how po- how po- I how didn't po- even mean that, but that was absolutely brand new. Um, I, I've said it, and I, I've completely forgot what we're saying now. I've yeah, we're going to say you've been saying uh, yeah, all season, all forty nine episodes or whatever. Uh, wingers have Shelf notoriously life. shot. Um, shelf life especially when they rely on their pace I, I, I think Forrest has lost his pace or he's lost his he, he's, he's, lost certain, he's certainly lost an edge to his game he, he doesn't attack players the same way he doesn't run at players as well um, I'm hoping he can bring it back but I'm a bit worried about it um, and I think Abada gives you more Abada does absolutely I think, if no, the, I think it's been night and day for last night when a badder was not the park on that side of the park than when Forrest was there. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I'm never going to take away what Forrest has given to this club and hopefully... That Absolutely he, not. I, and hopefully he does get back to his best, but every time he's came back after these big injuries, I've, there's been yet... I've not had a performance where I've went, that's James Forrest. There's not been one. I mean, Which is, and I know Forrest has a massive fall, a massive like cult fall because he's one of the, he's one of the, you know, he's been here years. He's a Celtic man. He's a Celtic. Celtic he's there boy. for the nine so, titles. You know, he's been there for it all. But you know, things do come to an end. And, and, and what I said, to, and even my dad was saying it last night. I think we have reached that point. I really do. Unless there is a massive, I, I, unless he changes his game and, and goes elsewhere in the park, or unless Anne's changes something, which he's not going to do, he's not. He's out of place in this team, and there's no sentimentality in this team, no. whatsoever. And he's done that in previous clubs. He's taken fan favourites and punted them. It, it could get to that. I'm not. Well, I'm not like. I'm punt, not. I'm I not don't think punt away, him. But like, if the writing's on the wall, 
and there's better players out there, then Ange will not be afraid to go and get better players. Yep. Or players that are more equipped to the task. And I know there's going to be people that maybe listen to this point in the podcast and they go, I think you're way off, I think you're being disrespectful to him or whatever and blah, blah, blah. But the day is going to come when Ange does that. So what's the difference between fans saying it and then when the manager does it? You know, the manager's going to identify it at some point. Wouldn't be shocked if he already has identified it. And we're just saying it. Maybe he did when Abada came in. Maybe he did. Abada... Abada I was, I was talking to Ange the other day and he was saying <laughs> you, you made that sound like you were you made it sound like you bumped into him in Tesco no. I was talking to you I was talking to Ange the other day I, I, he's, no, he's, the, he's, the get, he's getting married conservatories <laughs> put in aye aye big windies that meet, meet, meet McTassos in uh, the Glasgow <laughs> 4 I know he's a, a, a frequent uh, enjoyer yeah. Yeah. frequent what is it frequent frequent yeah aye. he's known to frequent that, those areas yeah. um, and he's in his fugal boss gear legend aye. boss to call boss to call um, what was I saying? You were, talk, you were talking to Angie every day. <laughs> I, I was, I was saying if I, if I was to meet him in person, um, I would be, I'd be a shivering mess. Honestly. <laughs> but if it's fine through Zoom, I can do that. It's just, it's, it's, it's just online but in person. I would, I'd be, I'd You'd be, be quite jittery. But, um, no, and and he was, he was saying that it, Abad has played more games than he even expected him to play this season mm-hmm. because obviously because of Forest injuries. You, you just think is a Abad is a long term player and it's going to take a lot for Forrest to, to get that position back now I realise why he played last night because he's had previous at Tynecastle he's got tons of experience there he's scored vital goals at, at Tynecastle but I think the time is now for Abada I think this is Abada's time he just gives you more he does but you agree well obviously you agree but you're not pointing asking you um but the last night it was so annoying for us I think a lot he was doing he was trying he kept trying to do that cut inside thing he was going to walk it wasn't right. doing anything, mm-hmm. it was just going to walk. And it was that when the ball comes across the face of the face of the goal. See if you just, just throw your left foot at that. I don't care what part you hits, just throw yourself at that. Mm-hmm. Well, yesterday it's a simple tap and it's 3-0 at that point. Again, you see the lopsidedness between Forrest on the right-hand side and Jota on the left-hand side. Yeah. Yeah. Jota just does it with ease. Mm-hmm. He's, it just, it's one movement and then he's it's, He's off. Mm-hmm. Whereas Forrest is generally, it's like he has a dug in a leash. And he's guiding them in the park. That's what it felt like last night for me. He's restrained, isn't he? Aye. It's like the shackles are on, and with mm-hmm. Jota, everything's so free. He's and he was just, himself. he was just an incredible last night. Mm-hmm. Absolutely incredible. And it's I just, feel, honestly, feel like we've not talked about him as much. I know he should, deserves, and once again, another player that deserves a full podcast. Deserves a full contract. Oh, I just, oh, just sign oh. him up, man. How much money would you pay? I mean, I know we don't need to go above six and a half. That's the agreed fee. But if 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 you were being realistic, I'd be, I'd be giving him a si- signing on fee mm-hmm. just to entice him to come to Celtic. Uh, I think he's that good. Good cut a million quid. Mm-hmm. There you yep. go, man. Um, I'd pay if look. If, I know it's like, once again doesn't matter. But if I was, I would genuinely be breaking a transfer record for him mm-hmm. if we had to. I'd be paying he, over <clears> ten million pounds if we had to. We somebody, there. somebody else will be breaking. Our transfer record right, in right, terms of when, when he when he does eventually go, he's not going to stay at Celtic forever. He's far too good for that. The Premier League is calling him or La Liga. I mean, you've seen how he, how well he done against Betis. He could do that every week. I think. Yep. All he's needed is this platform to shine and be the main man because he wasn't going to get that at Valladolid. I think it was. Aye, was Valid, aye, Valid, and he was never going to get that game time at Benfica. You're hoping that's still going to be the case, and he doesn't get that game time at Benfica aye. because then the rumours are they might be offering him it. Watch. Mm. How are you feeling about it, Cam? Confident? Are you, are you keeping your... What is it they say in the new Spider-Man film? What, expect disappointment and you'll never be disappointed. Yeah, what, what are you thinking right now? Where's your head with it? I, I think also... Zendaya would be in... Zendaya would be in uh, the cell. Where else he is? Beautiful. Um, I know, I think it's also... When we looked at the start of the transfer window and it seemed fairly confident, like, right, Celtic are going to pay the money. Matt like, Brown, that should be... Just waiting on it being confirmed and then... Also, there's there's been like this hold up there because obviously as uh, Miguel was touching on, like Benfica basically reaching out and saying, "Oh, we'll offer you an extra contract, mm-hmm. we'll offer you time to play." But then, let's just see he takes that extension in Benfica, right? And he plays for a year, plays absolutely rotten. He's just done himself over again. Mm. I feel yep. like if he comes, says he's. I don't want to make it pure bummers up, but I feel like he's just going to keep improving and improving. Mm-hmm. Like I said he will end up playing the Premier League. You think of where Ange's first season is at. And just second season is destined to be bigger and better. Yeah, right. absolutely. And Jota could be the biggest part of that, maybe. He could be in the Champions League playing that sort of football. Yeah, and exactly. He'd be the main man, but we've got other, he's, he'd be the main man, but we've got other players that can sort of take the heat off him as well. Where maybe he's underperforming, although that 
that quite frankly hasn't happened yet. Uh-huh. I think every game that Jota plays, he's, he's so effective, mm-hmm. and he's got the fear factor already. Other defend, I mean Michael Smith last night. I mentioned him again. Um, he's getting a lot of airtime in this, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was scared of him. It, oh, was mate, scared of that's how he went off. That was the reason. He's like, fuck this, I'm away. I was like, yeah, and Benkovic and Boyata, and I don't want to put that on them. But some when when the players don't have the bottle, they'll maybe they'll maybe feign an injury. One of the bottle. Um, Jota is a scary player. But he's a, he's a number. He's, he's one of a number of players that really, really have that ability to go to the next level. Mm-hmm. And I'm just glad that it's Celtic just now. But it's great recruitment by the club. Fantastic, fantastic recruitment. Um, let's go on then to the second half. It wasn't the greatest. We did dip a little bit. Hearts though did get a real good hold in the game. They came in and played well, and that's fair play to them. But the perseverance for me was big. Um, it's Massive. a different side of Celtic we did hold on well there was a lot of solid defensive moments we had to be for as much as Hearts might have had the ball Celtic at a lot of moments dealt with it really well mm-hmm. um, and, and yeah, that, that part the defensive side at Calm you have to acknowledge as well as you know Hearts might have had all those chances now, but Celtic had to do work and they've done it definitely I think we've done very well seeing out the game and the aspect I went to one and they were just applying all the pressure yep. obviously it leads up they get their penalty and I can't remember who it was that put up Liam Boyce but spelt it Bahoy so it's <laughs> good than that one I think it might have been Jai Jai put it up then I, then so I put it up I, as well then I took it off am I a fucking thiefing bastard <laughs> um, no but I think it was really nice to see actually like the defence come together and look as I think Starfield he gets a very vital block and plays away for the corner when the balls that comes in mm-hmm. again I feel that if that's when it'll just get passed off as off that's his job but <laughs> that, that, that's his job <laughs> that, that's his job that um, is what will happen though uh, there's a well, clear agenda against Starfield yep. and it needs to stop because it'll, it'll filter through to him eventually I think I, I hope it doesn't affect him but I, I just want I want the fans to, to get behind them you want them, to, yeah. you want them to admire him exactly and that's it that's all you want there's lots to admire but we held on we got the win fantastic does these uh, Ryan we, we've seen it against Atla second half we did dip it's an issue it, it is an issue we can't go ignored because we are winning games there is an issue there but I mean I, I'm not Overly concerned, but it is something I want to see rectified. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that will be rectified once we can rotate the team a wee bit. Because mm-hmm. that's the way the way that Ange plays. You can't have a, a, a like a settled eleven. You need fourteen or fifteen players that can come in when mm-hmm. necessary. Because the way that we play, these injuries and, and fatigue, they're just going to pile up and pile up. Um, so we need those players to be ready to come in when necessary. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's just it's it's the it's the con it's one of the cons to the way we play. Mm-hmm. We, we play great football, such expansive great football. The likes that I don't even think Rogers was playing yeah. football this good, but it comes at a cost, and it's 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 just the, the fatigue just kicks in after sixty minutes. Yep. It was it, it's a problem, but some it's something that I think will get rectified once the players are back in. Yep, you just want to see that whole, you know, we don't stop, we never stop. The opposition stops. Well, I mean, it's not as if we're stopping. It's just, it's not as good as it's what we're slowing. doing. Before. Yeah, it's, it's slowing. slowing it gives, rather than stopping. It gives the team a chance. And you you seen that last night with the ability to bring on players off the bench. Yep. Hearts had better players to bring on off the bench. That Benangimi made a difference when he came on. Yep. It was Even that big Sims was all right, I thought, mm-hmm. when he came on. Yep, I think he came on at half-time, didn't he? Aye. Um, but I, it just shows you that you need a bench. You need players that you can come on after 50, 60 minutes yeah. and, and change the game. Or, yeah. or get some life back into the game. But we've got to talk about the penalty. How on earth is that? That's an act of God. I'm telling you, somebody's in control of that ball. We'll look back on that at the end of the season. If we you, that's, the as soon as my dad missed it, my dad missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know Boyce is bold, but I mean, it's, it's no Stevie Fitzsimons, fuck's sake. As soon as Boyce missed it, my dad said to me, the first thing he said was, that's going to be like that's what wins us the league. He was convinced. That. I mean, wow. I mean, I'm not saying it. I'm not. I don't know where the league's going. Not on, not on. Um, I don't know where the league's going. Not yet. Mike's. Um, not not, not live. Not anyway. live. Not live. Maybe see me in the pub on Saturday night. I'll say different. Or Callum's on Saturday night. I should say. I might say different. But um, no, it's a massive moment. But it is, and it's one of those season definers. It's one of those things that you could potentially look back and go, "Aye, when Boyce missed the penalty, that's how you remember the game." You know, it's huge and I, almost it. Well, it is just it's, it's, just, it's uh, as big as um, Jota's goal at Aberdeen yeah. as well. And it's just it's honestly fucking incredible that the Hearts fans started celebrating. 
That was the best part of it all. They thought it was in. Fucking inject that. Hearts fans were funny because there was another thing when, when Hitati scored, a couple of them behind the goal flinch because of the absolute power of the shot. <laughs> love that. Yeah, they, Frightening. I, I, not a big fan of Hearts myself either. I love Kendall, love him with all my heart, but now I'm not a big fan of Hearts. Yeah. And, and their, uh, their counterparts, Hibs as well. Yeah. Not a fan of any cunt outside Celtic. No. Why would I be? Why would I be? Exactly. Anyway. Why would you be anywhere else? I know. Why well, anywhere else? Right. Let's let's go on to talk about um, a couple other things before we move on to that. That's forty five minutes in one game, man. It was, a, it was a fucking packed game to talk about. There's so much, and that was that was mainly the reason for this podcast. I wanted to be able to talk about that game in depth. I want to be able to talk about the weekend a little bit as well because we do have a tough one on Saturday. Dundee United at home. They got a big, big result last <coughs> night, late in the game, the ninetieth minute. In fact, Nicky Clark scored his second to secure a two one win for Dundee United, which gives him a little bit of confidence a little bit of momentum heading into the game against Celtic they know that if they get something against Celtic there's a realistic chance of getting back into that top six sometime soon um, well it could happen anytime they're on, 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 on par with uh, Aberdeen at the moment but the last time Dundee United came to Celtic Park it was 1-0 we, we didn't manage to beat them um, so this is a, another one It's a big big test for Celtic Brian Absolutely um, That was when Abada scored wasn't it And then so. is it Harks went up and scored aye. Basically from the kickoff That's right Which aye. was an absolute nightmare And then We huffed and puffed but I see when you think about the points We have dropped this season It's Another so fun I know it's one of those things Like oh if your aunt had balls She'd be your uncle And if my fucking Carbonara had ham It'd be fucking I don't know A pig But it's just it's just like what the fuck, man! Like some of the points we've dropped is so so irritating. It's like, annoying. You look at the three draws we've had. What have they been? So we had Levy at home. We had Dundee, Dundee United, United at home. And what was the other draw? St. Mi- St. Mirren, St. Mirren, aye, St. St. Mirren away. And then the three losses we've had: Rangers, Hearts, and 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 Levy away. Like could have won all three of those oh, games. So irritating, man! Mm. Such irritating points to draw. And I know it's just unfeasible to go through a season winning thirty eight out of thirty eight, but. It's just fucking so annoying. Um, but it's a big test, Ryan, as we're saying. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's a chance for redemption as well because of that. obviously the last time they took points off us, which was really annoying. They all, they had a chance right at the end to win the game, which yep. would have been an absolute nightmare. Um, I think that was when they were in quite good form as well, mm-hmm. but their forms went off a cliff recently, but they'll be happy with their one time coach. will be resting a wee bit easier tonight. Um, or oh, well, they had a man. decent sleep last uh, night. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it's one of those games that's it doesn't suit us as much as the Hearts game because you knew that Hearts would come out and play against us yep. you just know already that um, Dundee United are going to play a low block and make it as difficult as possible and yep. we need to, we need the creative players like Hitati and O'Reilly to be in, those, in between the lines and making chances for big GG up front big GG uh, Cam we had a conversation in the way here and Ryan I'll bring you into this in a moment to see if you agree with me and Callum or not but we'll bring it up what we were talking about Callum we were talking in the way here about how the team goes out on Saturday and how we feel and how, who we feel and, 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 and what we do in the, the, the final bit of preparation for that derby game we were saying that you know get the strongest out again definitely I see I don't the change I'd make for last night's team to start would be Forrest away right. from the team. That's I'd be changing. Other than that, keep everybody else the same. Mm-hmm. Like, also, we touched on like McKenzie saying about Julian. I'm, I'm sorry, seeing less we are three and Alton Cruz in that game. Aye. I don't fancy Julian Dorian. Yeah, yeah, I don't fancy PTSD after playing. <laughs> <laughs> I said that exact thing. I said that exact thing. Exactly. Exactly. Post is all my god. Orange shirts, goalpost. Guys are fit in the middle of the park or something. But no, you're, you, yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Cam. What's the point? I don't see any. Nah, I don't. As I said, the only one obviously just because I, I put a performance Aye. last night for the stats and when I'm taking it out of there. I'm, why change it? If it's, it's not broke, don't fix it. Aye. We do not have the squad right now to rotate in the way that we would quite like to rotate. Mm-hmm. Like players like, if you were able to bring Maida or Rogic back into the fray, obviously they're not there. So you just need to keep on going with basically the same team that we had yesterday. Mm. But I would, I would like like yourself, Cam, I would, I would put, um, I'd put a bad in and mm-hmm. I would actually put scales in as well. Aye, I'd be able to put scales, nah, scales, put scales in too. But the, the, the point on Julian, and there will be a few people that might suggest playing him, why? It makes no sense. Why change the partnership that's going to play against Rangers? Because it's guaranteed it's going to be Vickers to start. Unless one of them get injured, or touch wood once again, unless one of them get injured or, or anything like that, suspended, it's going to be Starfelt and Carter Vickers. Why would you make one of them go cold turkey the game before? Why would you take them off suddenly just to give Julian a game? 
Give him 10, 15, perfect. 10, 15 minutes, you said, Cam. That's fantastic. That's time, that's minutes in his legs if we can afford to do so. But you're going into a game where you've got to play the team that I think is going to play against Rangers or the, 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 the closest anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but it, it just makes no sense to me why you'd make a big change like that. And, you know, Dundee United, you, you, people are... The, and I should point, Cal made it... And, and not, I, hope, I don't know if Cal will be listening or not. And I don't mean to shame him. I don't mean to fucking embarrass him on the show or not. He was like, ah, it was Dundee United. I can't, the last time we played Dundee United, Park they took points. You know what We're the, not in any position no, to be... Best. No, absolutely because, not. Because the, these games, it seems as if we do better against the uh, against the teams that we maybe should struggle right. against. And then these sort of gimme games. They're not gimme games, but a lot of fans will call them gimme yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. That's those are the games that we drop points, so we just need to be vigilant. I, I, I'm, I'm just looking at the the, fi- the fixture list. I don't think Julian will start the game until Rafe Rovers. I don't think he'll start till then either. I don't see why he would. I want to see him back. Don't get me wrong, but I don't see why he would why we'd get in at the moment. I'll bring him off the bench. For a couple. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. If if we're, we're ahead and we're ahead by a few goals, that's something else I want to see. At the, at the weekend, I want to st- I want a really resounding win if we can. Right. Um, you're just hoping that if we score the first goal early against Dundee United, then we'll put three, four past them because we've not seen that in a wee while. I, I can't remember the last time we scored more than three goals. Yeah, th- it's, it's been a while. When was the last time we scored more than three goals? That's a good. Because we cuffed them at we cuffed them at uh, Tannadice, and it should have been more. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're coming out of games thinking we're, we're going to do a team one day, but that's mad. Right, and this applies to you, not so much Callum. But the last time we played that, that day, Callum, uh, we, we sorry, we played Dundee United at um, Tannadice. The podcast before that, we were at the Axon Studio. Feels like fucking easy. That feels like I don't, well, I don't even know. It's time is just. That was a nice wee day too. Time is just away, man. I don't know what's yesterday and what's next week. I don't. Oh, it's fucking mental. Um, but Dundee United is a game we should be winning, though, and we need to. It's Absolutely. like this is this is it. This is the final game. You want to go in riding high. Listen, I'm going to be honest, I don't imagine any Rangers fans who have stuck to 52 minutes, but if they have, then... Hi. <laughs> Fucking weird. Um, but, you know, like, 50, 52 minutes into this show, and I'll, I'll say it safely, Rangers weren't apparently that great last night. No. no I've seen a lot of people complaining yeah, about them. Yeah, I've no, seen, and that's that. against, that's against Livy. Livy should have got a penalty. Yeah. Well. Livy should have had a penalty. Um, Don Robertson. But apparently yeah. they were not great last night. Which I'm not going to take anything too much from because it means nothing. It's not the game on Wednesday, but... You know, if we can go in and get a big, big performance against Dundee United on Saturday, I will be buzzing heading into that game. And when I'll still be buzzing heading into Wednesday, but I'll be buzzing even more so if we can go in after taking a good couple of goals off of them. A statement before the statement. Yeah, that's what we need to do. He's just having no, no in the head there. Don't need to put any more words that's to that, it. do you? Uh, we uh, summed it up there perfect. Uh, it's just, we need to go out there, get a win, and then all set for Wednesday. Yep. Oh, I can't wait, man. I'm fine. When Wednesday will take care of itself because that's just a Celtic Rangers game. It's Aye. And just to, for a wee bit of poetry, um, the last time that we played Dundee United, Ryan was in hospitality. I was, yes. And I'll be in hospitality for Dundee United this Saturday. <laughs> yes. Uh, what the fucking hell? What is it with Dundee United and hospitality? Um, don't worry, I'm not turning into a prawn sandwich eater. I'm not turning into a conservative voter. Uh, no, you've already done one of them. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> don't you fucking start, man. <laughs> I'll kick you off a show. Um, <laughs> I'm, I've decided to treat my dad for his for his birthday. It was passed on Monday there. Um, so first time I'm going to be with my dad for a game in, in almost six years. Last time I was with my dad a game was a Motherwell game seven 0 Jack Aitchison scored. Ronnie Dial as the last game trophy day. That's the last time I went my dad. Did he did he just chuck it after that? So I got my season ticket the year following. Um, and my dad's, you know, my dad's a wee bit older. He just likes watching the games in the telly now. But he's been a couple here and there. I bought him a couple of tickets for his birthday over the years, and he's always, I always used to get him tickets for the, the game of his birthday. Mm-hmm. But obviously, last year couldn't do that. Yeah. Um, so this is this is his first game since probably his birthday a couple of years ago. Wow. So uh, he'll be buzzing. I mean, he's he's he used to go to the games all this. He's done it all. He's seen it all. I think he had a season ticket right up until some point in the nineties, and then you know, it's kind of work got in the way, sort of thing. So. Ah, good for him. I'll enjoy that. I'm looking forward to seeing it with my dad. It'll be good. Um, but aye, let's let's move on to the final couple of segments of the show. Ryan, I'll let you load up the Twitter questions. We've got Twitter questions. We've got a quiz. While, while Ryan looks for the questions, I'll, I'll fill up the gap as I always do with some chat. Cal, we've had a lot of late nights playing F1 <laughs> recently. You enjoying it? Aye, but I mean, I don't like you. I've last, last, last night. Of nights, uh, aye. Last night? <laughs> previous nights, right? A lot of nights. A lot of nights. Aye. Look, listen, it's just no went well for me. I'm, I'm, in a real, I'm at a real Roman Grosjean point <laughs> in my career. Um, 
I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where my future lies. It really is low. But, but you're in a Mercedes. How? Like, because I keep fucking crashing. How? <laughs> but how? Like, well, what, the last what night. you keep doing so wrong? Hitting and I know Scott fucking overtook a safety car. <laughs> stupidest thing ever. <laughs> you disqualified to the cheek to moan about it, but. I mean, Jordan murdered me as well, to be fair. Aye, I you murdered him countless times. Aye, true. But <laughs> listen up, when I get my move to my team, that's when it's on top. My team. Well, I got edging ever closer to the start of the season, wasn't Right, Ryan. Um, will I just update the, the <coughs> listeners to what I've been doing recently? Aye, on you go. Go for it. Well, I watched a South Korean movie the other night. You were, oh, is that that Parasite? I watched Aye. Parasite, by the way. If you've got Amazon Prime, get that on. Nice. It's like, it's like a Tarantino sort of movie, but in but South in, Korean. But in South Korean. See, I don't, I don't know if I've got the attention span for that. You're a TV span. series, man. Span. Aye, I, I don't... I just Which is weird, because if you say you don't have the attention span, the movies are usually like one and done. Spam so. it first, and I? Um... I know, but it's weird because it's like, ugh, I don't know if I could watch subtitles for a full movie, like stay concentrated, but... You get I, used to it after I, a I, But I watched like the full Anarchos and I was fine, you know what I mean? <laughs> I watched, I've watched a lot of like TV shows that have been, I've now watched like that Squid Game, but... I've, I can tell you. I've watched a lot of stuff with subtitles and I've been fine, but as soon as it comes to a film, I just don't think I can. I thought within the first five minutes of the movie, I was like, oh, they're speaking too fast, I'm going to be watching the subtitles, but you get... Once it gets more calmer and you get used to the subtitles at the bottom of the screen, I was really, really enjoying it. And it's just, it just shows you how how many good movies there are in different countries that yep. are made in different countries. And that was, mm-hmm. that was one of the first. That, that one, did that one Oscar? The mm-hmm. Oscar, I best picture. Best picture. Madness. That. It's a good movie. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Plenty of twists as well, which is great. Yeah, you like a wee twist. I do. Oh yes, love that. Right, let's go to Twitter questions then as we head to the final couple segments of the show. Uh, hit it, Ryan. Aidan asks, is it true that Rio Hatati is the reincarnation of Andrea Pirlo? I, I think it could be the reincarnation of many a player. Yep. Sadly, Andrea Pirlo isn't dead. Sadly? <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, sounds awful. Are you, are you, are, I don't even know that. Are, 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 are you a New York Red Bulls man or I don't know, I mean, I'm a Torino loyalist, mate. Torino. Uh, yeah, Torino the loyalist. fact that you're even saying loyalist is just... Uh, wait, what the <laughs> fuck? I never meant to like that. I just, you know... Uh, who's, a, who's a dead legendary central midfielder that he could be the reincarnation of? Like, there's no bad... This is bad, isn't it? I know, really bad. Uh, uh, really, let's move on. Uh, he could be the reincarnation of many a player. Wait, wait, the, I actually the think of a dead midfielder. Uh, there's, there's, uh, he could be the reincarnation of many, many a player. Many a player. But um, I think that, you know, as I said last night, the combination for me goes um, Andrea Pirlo, Paul Scholes, Stan Petrov, uh, Xavi Hernandez, mm-hmm. and um, fuck it, we'll throw in a wee bit of... Throw in a wee bit of... Um, You're going to say Nakamura, aren't you? No, it's not a centre mid. It could have been. could have been. Uh, who else? Who else is there? Um, Paul McGowan. Paul McGowan. <laughs> 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 That's it. There's that shot last night was a bit like Kevin De Bruyne as well. Kevin De Bruyne. Taking Kevin De Bruyne. Nice. And you get the pronunciation right. Kevin De Bruyne. Bruno Fernandes. Aye. Um, but so I, you, were, you were looking at me. I do another. Aye, go to the next question. Go to the next question. Actually, we've got somebody pulling you up. It's usually somebody pulling me oh, up. Wow. Um, wow. Can we get an apology from Mister One One Eight to the Bethlehem Busquets for tweeting, "I would take Charlie Mulgrew back over near Beaton in August." <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Look directly at the camera. Listen, in August, you know, it's, it's gonna be funny when he says, "Listen." <laughs> Listen in August, I would have took fucking Charlie Chaplin. Air fucking the be on. Never mind, Mulgrew. So um, I wasn't wrong at the time, was I? I mean, that was just shortly. I after did want him gone. I that was want I wanted him gone. It was shortly that after. That was the, recency bias. It was shortly know. after the the the, the Michelin um, mischief. Kefafel. Kefafel. Um But look, I apologise to, to beat on. Um, I apologise for, for, for slander. I apologise for saying you should be out the door and I apologise for saying I'd take Chico Mulgrew over you. Three Palestine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, John Dalhoun says, been meaning to ask this for a while, gentlemen. Oh, What's right. with the dodgy 70s porno music in the intro? <laughs> <laughs> Is that, is that the first time I've been asked? Eh? Yeah. So, do you know? Do you want to know the honest story behind that? I that, love it. I love it. Right? It's it's became the just it's became the music for the show, right? But do you know? Do you know where it's from? No. You have no idea where it's from? No, 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 none of you have a clue, page, right? Page forty of Pornhub, probably. <laughs> no, it's actually 
the theme song for I don't know if you've heard them. There's this tag team in wrestling called Mustache Mountain. It's their what? It's, it? it's their WCPW theme. Oh wow! Well. It's their theme. So um, Trent Seven and, and uh, Tyler Bates. Uh, I love the, uh, one of my favourite tag teams in, in world wrestling. Dunn was part of that as well. Love them. Aye, um, I love the, those two. They still go. So when WCPW started. That was I remember when that. I was at the height of like my love for British wrestling. Like um, that British was when I, strong style. yeah, I love that kind of stuff, and it's kind of died away. Years now it's not as good now, but I still love they too, and I just loved their theme. It was just funky. It was brilliant, and I was and, and for years it's just always stuck in my head as the intro song for this podcast, <laughs> and, and, and I made it happen. That's generally it. So if you go in and type in mustache mountain wcpw theme you'll find it but wcpw isn't even a company anymore no, no, it they're, they're short lived wasn't oh, it oh it was only a couple of years i think maybe not even and uh, it's not a company anymore i believe the song's non copyright adam <laughs> seems to be adam so it's Blampy, you are one of the greats you're one of the greats <laughs> you're one of the greats um i'm more of a pachiti man myself um, so they're both sound to be yeah fair. well Blampy is a bit controversial you know but he's back on wrestling ah, but he's a hard. bit mm. I'm still there. I'm still there. Uh, I like his booking. Mm, a bit, yeah, dodgy one. He has a wee bit, just a wee bit. But aye, that's the, that's the story. There you go. That's the story. Uh, Who asked that? John Dalhoun. Ah, I've been waiting for. There's honestly over all 49 of our episodes or 48 that have been published, not one person has ever pointed it out. Mm. Not one person's recognised that. I'm, I'm glad so I've got I, that. I remember one time saying, oh, like somebody commented, like, wicked baseline and that. And I was like, ah, that's me sitting there. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> remember when we announced Post the Coglu? Um, I actually, that actually sounded a bit dirty there. Um, when we announced Ange, sorry, I don't like calling him by his second name. He's Ange to me. Yeah, Ange. Um, He's a Ange. Remember we had Men at Work on it? Oh, that's right. That was and, phenomenal. And, uh, when uh, Lennon was going up in the uh, Eta James, at last. <laughs> do, 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 do. That was what was that for do that? Maybe a special choice. Do you miss Lenny? I, I, do, do, do you know we were talking about this last night on Xbox? I, I miss him. Really? I miss him, mate. I miss the memes. I, do, I miss the I've memes. never felt something so strong about wanting like a manager to lose his mate, job. That sounds terrible. I but last season, that was the fire in my belly. Mate, I, I, don't, like, I don't know what it is. I don't miss him as a manager. I just miss like he's had obvious and shit like I just missed like that one we were watching yesterday at the time it was at the time, at, at, at time it was obviously like boiling my blood but she looking back on it man it's part isn't it fucking incredible honestly some gimmick I can't remember I'm, the, remember I'm the twisting Livingston. everything I ever said and ho- remember the Livingston one where he does the scary face <laughs> Oh, it, looks like, it, it looks like you know when Pennywise is about to eat a Wayne and the teeth start cracking <laughs> out. That's what it looks like. But, um, oh, Mrs. No. Nuss, man, Mrs. Nuss. How many Siamese cats? Siamese, my Siamese boys. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of a real Hitati song. Oh, I do you know like His uh, name is do you know Rio like and he dances by James Sands. Yeah, that's plenty. <laughs> well, I can't, like, can't even sing that until Wednesday. I hope he plays. Do you know like? Do you know like um, I think he's, I can't remember if it was Ben or Sean Yurts. Dazen and her tatty, Dazen and her tatty, everybody. <laughs> that was a bad fucking, honestly, a tune, an absolute fucking did you tune. The, did you hear the guy singing Jota on the wing, but it's all the different versions that, mate, that's incredible, mate. That is incredible. That is honestly my sleep paralysis. Fuck, mate, now. that's incredible. People are slaughtering on it, man. I think like, it's brilliant. I want the guy... Who made the, the you know I've got my eyes on you Ange Postacoglu so <laughs> he needs to come back. How's what, come the back? world, because he done a song, with, he done a Casey Musgrave song which was really underrated. Uh, like, I, I I was so surprised that he done a Casey Musgrave song. Just fucking Celtic. love the where well, mother in the back for oh, wow. <laughs> gonna have to make a move. Big dumb. Ready to have a right back in the back. Big dumb. Right dumb he's screaming like what the fuck, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> well, have you got any nonsensical songs you like, like for your partner? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. it's cropped up on social media over the past few years. Ah, there's some bad thing I'm to mention them. Sung one last night with F1. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about. What was the song we'll coming that, out or uh, We'll leave that off the podcast. Ah, we'll leave that to the next um, off. <laughs> also, I enjoyed the, um, <laughs> I must say, Eddie Howe, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dancing in the living room. I miss that. Oh. Sliding wee socks <laughs> on. Eddie Howe, Eddie Howe. Brilliant, man. Right. Remember that? <laughs> Some, I think it was actually Duff that tweeted Remember when everybody was watching the playoff game Between Bournemouth I and hope they lost Who was it? Bournemouth and uh, t- 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 Brentford Aye. Hoping that they lost So that Eddie Howe would come in quick 
God, life comes at you fast, eh? Oh, but I'll, I'll need to do madness. these questions now. Right, let's go. Um, Shay asks, Julian, to start Saturday, I personally thought CCV wasn't amazing last night and could have been better. Well, I, I, I thought it was solid. CCV. I think if... I know you've made the argument about not changing the team, but you probably could get away with it against them United just due to the way that they're going to be playing. Um, they'll probably play 10 men behind the ball with... Or, or nine men behind the ball and Tony Watt just sort of Tony Watt or Nicky Clark obviously Clark scored the two goals yesterday but um, if there's one game that he could come back in it could probably be Dundee United but I, I want us to keep the two aye yeah uh, I think obviously we touched on it a bit earlier mm-hmm. I'd rather keep Carter Vickers in then bring Julian in but I suppose it's up to Angie isn't it? up to Angie so Super Tonic Tom Rogic says, <laughs> Near Beton, did you see the turnaround after his moment of mad- madness against Mitchelland? Also, what has changed for Near? Uh, what has changed for Near? For, get, for getting hounded out by some sections of support to getting back in. I think it's just him playing in his proper position. Aye. Aye. Touched on it, haven't we? Yeah. I'd agree. God bless him. Free Palestine. True. Right, next question. Um, before Adam, Adam asks, are you worried about a performance level dropping off, especially when Rangers are right around the corner? Well, we kind of touched on it. Um, I don't know. I, I I think that we touched on the fatigue and we touched on maybe how we've dipped in the second half mm-hmm. a little bit. But I'm not overly concerned. Mostly because I don't look at Rangers right now and think that they're all that good either. You know, they have not been, you know... They played against, uh, they drew with Aberdeen, of course. They weren't great against Livingston. Who did they even play in the cup? Uh, still on Albion. Still on Albion. So that was still on Albion. And yeah, I, I don't think that any of the two teams are, have necessarily got dramatic bragging rights over the other or d- a dramatic momentum gain over the other. I, I'm, I'm fine just now. Yeah, me too. Yeah, is it? Well, poor Cal never had the answer. <laughs> no, I think if, even with the momentum, but I think everybody always says when you get to the derby, it's just. The, every momentum button that goes out the window, form goes out the window, end up just getting treated like a cup final. Yep. Yeah. That's whoever turns up my day. Yep. We'll go for two more if there's okay. two more. We'll go for two <coughs> more if there's two. Is Matt O'Reilly the sexiest man in Scottish football? Asks Techno, but his name's Adam. And he's Joe Hart. Matt O'Reilly. Joe Hart. Matt O'Reilly is a very good looking boy. Joe Hart. They seen that. You seen that? 40. Do you actually see I was going to make my lock screen 40? Will, will the rest of the viewers see it? I, I could maybe the try. And, obviously won't, I could try and maybe throw it up on screen, but I'll describe it for all its glory. I mean, look at that. Oh, I don't want to sit in the chat. No, it's just absolutely. It's, it's you can see there that he's starting to lose his hair a wee bit. As you can maybe see. Maybe due to the product that he's so, advertising. So, Joe Hart. Um, and I hope not. I use that. You know, and and he's and he's towel um, for his head and shoulders. That's advert. very questionable that you've got that on your phone. How? Especially for the listeners that kind of see the picture. <laughs> it's um, it's fantastic. The towel's around his neck, but he also has a towel su- covering his lower half. Oh, that's um, great, isn't it? Aye, and um, yeah, it's very tasteful. Mm-hmm. Very tasteful. Um, it's just a great photo does of him. It, does it strike a chord with you, Ryan? Does 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 strike a chord? Well, you know, there was a a piece that if I can find it very quickly, there was a piece that I found on um on uh, eBay that I was thinking about copping. Mm-hmm. Um, if I can just scroll and find it, as you can see, fifteen ninety nine. It's a signed, signed print of uh, Joe with his towel. Well, if it says you used. <laughs> <laughs> What's it being used for? What does it say you? Oh, I used. I said, does I? Is it as good marks in certain meanings? <laughs> well, I think it's great. Uh, I really do. Um, but Are I, you selling it, aye? <laughs> I would never be saying that. Right, uh, is that a sense? Uh, There's a one I more. I think the other one that would top it was the photo you requested on Twitter, a Jota. The retro oh, Serata, yes. unreal. Yes, I'd love to yes, see that. Yes, I got my print in that. Ooh, that's a um, waiting for my frame to come. Logan asks, What's your favourite thing to have on a piece? That's such a random I question. Know, I, like, I like it. I, I think questions nice. like that deserve to be answered. They do. The favourite thing to have on a piece? Oh, Christ. Do you know what I do? I do love an old fashioned piece and Chris. Cheese and onion walkers. Slap a bit of fucking love, Paco, and that. Roll, Beautiful. Rolls are better than pieces, though. Uh, well, I probably, but it's the questions, like the questions, the piece. Well, I'm gonna. I'm, I don't. I never well, really have you've, it. So. You've, you've surely had a piece. Well, I've had it before. Yes. Yes. So, what's your favourite piece? Just butter. 
thought you were about to say ring. What? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no need for that. <laughs> Tell me, you got a favourite piece. You just yeah, like, but yeah. you should butter. Oh my god! Is that what you said? Yeah, look, look, this boy is literally on safari. <laughs> <laughs> Delayed reaction, man. You're like the, the, the fans at Tyne Castle, man. Jeez, oh. um, Did you just see a piece of butter? Soya butter for about twenty years. And soya butter. Aye, oh, because I'm allergic. Oh, or aye. I was allergic, but I can have love pack now. Ah, I like a bit of love pack. So just a piece of butter. But I would have like Billy Bear meat on it. Oh, I've not that in years. Oh, you know. <laughs> but if we if we're go if we're going on a roll, <laughs> then I would have a wee, I would have a cheese slice and a chicken burger, like one of the bird's eye chicken burgers. That's a fucking burger, not a fucking piece. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll answer I'll have, I'll have a, a two pieces and burger, pal. Can I have some Billy yeah, Bear meat, please? Billy Bear meat. That's the most rancid food on earth. You ever cut the eyes out? <laughs> Fucking Hannibal Lecter, fucking hell! You know, like Dwight in the office, the CPR dummy. I was trying to do the noise. <laughs> what about you, Cam? Yeah, I don't know. But a chop pork, chop pork. Nah, classic, simple. Uh, I like a piece of tuna. I like a good piece of tuna. I know tuna is not everybody's, everybody's fancy, but I do like a piece of tuna. Somebody had some fish last night in Grace's, and it, it went past me, honestly. I wanted it. You wanted it? But <laughs> I had one McDonald's. Do wanted I, it? What? I, yeah, I wanted it. Aye, you I wanted the want fish. Want me? <laughs> fish, if, if I'm here, you're here. <laughs> the, the fish is just a random piece of hand. <laughs> if I'm here, you're here. No reason I'm here. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus. No, Twenty nuggets, big back, and I love the chips I had last. What on a piece? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you something: if you get that rap god, then he'll get that piece. Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, that, that, that would on. be absolutely <laughs> lethal. Brilliant, mate. Right. Uh, okay, uh, guys. Do right. you do you oh, think Gigi will get ten plus goals this season? Asks Aiden Van Shortos. Yes. 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 Let's move on to the final segment of the show. I'm not doing the quiz. Yep. Ah, uh, you're the. The host, right? Okay, quiz time. Uh, do you know what I watched for the first time today? That new Ant and Deck program. I didn't even know there was one. Limitless or something's it called? Don't know. There's f- folk can win like a million quid now, that man. It's madness. Mm-hmm. You seen it? Fucking crazy. Well, anyway, I'll tell you something about Ant and Deck. You see so many cancellations of different people. Don't know how Ant's back in there. He, mate, he was only an alcoholic. I crashed the car. Oh, crashed the car. Mate, he hit rock bottom. See this. These are sort of like Stephen Mulhern should be on top. You, you, oh. don't, you don't hear about this trouble from Stephen Mulhern. Oh, keep Home five years. Um, <laughs> it's time for the quiz. Get, get your, get your That's the usual way a lot of them. You wait till they're retired and then yeah. it all comes up. That all comes up. If, um, you're, if you're still watching just now, uh, put Stephen Mulhern in Steve the comments. Mulhern. <laughs> Been for this in the last episode. My dad hates him. Can I yeah. stand him? Eh? Can I stand Mulhern? Uh, right, so I'm going to put on hopefully a graphic on screen this time. I'm going to finally start making it of the Quiz League table for 2022. Currently, Kieran Old sits top of the league, playing two games and winning one. Ryan McGinley, you have played one and won one. Technically, you should be top of the league, but we'll just leave it as Kieran for now because he's the reigning champion, I suppose. All right, so Kieran's on top with two played with one win. Ryan won played one win. I've played one, lost one. And Callum, for the first time today, you will compete in the 2022 Celtic okay. Thunder Quiz Championship. Fucking so after course. after today, I will have played in two, you would have played in one, one. and Kieran would have played in two, which means if we do get a four-person show for the Derby preview, it's going to be Callum against Ryan, so to make it to all. So we'll see what happens. Um, but it's for today, me against Callum Craig, Ryan McGinley. So, who wants to go first and who wants to go second? Cal, yeah. you can choose if you'd like set A or set B. Uh, I'll go set B. Okay. Set B, so I'm up first. Ryan, you're up first. So this is a true or false. Mm. Abada has scored more goals than Jota in the Scottish Premiership this season. That's got to be true. It's true. Yeah. Abada scored six and Jota scored five. Yeah. To equalise, Cal, Berem Kyle, legend. Came through the same youth academy as a badder. True or false? False. Correct. Kyle came through at Maccabi Haifa and a badder came through at M. Peter Tikva. See, I would have said false, right? But the way I was thinking about it was age. 
I was like, that was fucking. I'd like have been in fucking like nappies. The full like, <laughs> <laughs> same like, aye, 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 aye. Aye. I, I don't know this as soon as you begin the answer, right? Okay. What and all? So, uh, wait a minute. I you answered that one. Yeah, it's my question. That was Callum's question. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I get these mixed up. No. Uh, I don't even know. I could. I sent you an email. <laughs> Are you going first, Callum? Uh, no, I'm no, first. No, I'm Michael, this is so not right. right. <laughs> this is so not right, Michael. I, I'm so rough, man. Uh, Dyson Maeda came off the bench earlier today against China and played 35 minutes. But what was the outcome of the game? What the fuck knows? I don't even know he played. Not that. Uh, what was the outcome? Did I need to just get a result or a score? I think you just need to give the result. Uh, you don't need to score. So it was China against Japan. Mm-hmm. I'm going to... It's a complete and utter guess. I'm going to go for a draw. Nope. Japan won. Bastards. I think it was... No, it wasn't 2-0. It was 4-0. Ah. Um, so to take the lead. Celtic are set to face Rafe Rovers in the next round of the League Cup. Oh, but what position do they currently sit in the Scottish Championship? Seventh. Fourth. Oh, fuck. Just how much we watch a championship. <laughs> exactly. I knew they were quite high up. Um, they were having a good season. Uh, so Ryan, Matt O'Reilly joined Celtic from MK Dons. Name the player that made the switch the opposite way in 2012. Oh. This is one of those ones that if you know... If you know, you know. Yeah. Who left Celtic in 2012 <coughs> to join MK Milton Keynes Dons? Or should I say Wimbledon? Oh. Um, yeah, true. No. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought I thought I'd had enough guess there, but I thought you were saying no, no when I went to the call of Wimbledon um, <laughs> you and Paul and so like that oh, <laughs> right. uh, this is, it's, it's got to be some shite uh, I don't know if I should give you a hint or not I don't know I'd feel harsh on Cal if he gave me a hint um, what do you think Ah, fuck it, game up yeah, right. I need to run up the road <laughs> <laughs> this is a player cool. that you talk about more off the pitch than anything he done on the pitch. First person that he hit my head there was Tony Stokes, but it's not him. Twenty twelve. So oh, is it? It's no. It's not Paul Slane, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it Paul Slane? You never heard them tell the stories about it. No, no I I listen, I he said the managers have, essentially have. said when he went in, like, "You're just here to <laughs> pick up the vibes in the team, basically, <laughs> and give everyone a good time." Oh, brilliant, so, Cal. I'm trying to figure out what the score is just now. Is this to uh, so, 2-1, third question? Yep. Aye. Uh, how many members of the current Celtic squad played in all four Scottish Cup finals during the quadruple treble? Oh, fuck. It's two, just a number you're looking for. So, what's the question again? How many members of the current Celtic squad played in all four Cup finals during hmm. the quadruple treble? Um. Oh, shit. Three? Just the one. One. Cal McGregor. He's there. He's oh, always I think just featuring in the team in general. Yeah. So I'm up two one in my fourth <laughs> question. So I for this, not good, aye. this is a gimme question, by the way. Alright, okay. Greek international Yakimakis. Bastard Cel- gonna be back, yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second. Yakimakis put Celtic two goals ahead last night. Name the only three Greek players to ever play for Celtic. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. Vasilis Barkas. Correct. George Samaras yes. and fuck who's the other Greek boy name the only three Greek players to ever play oh right well Yanis Yakimakis yes. <laughs> George Yakimakis sorry they've done that twice today so is, this, is this to go 3-2 three. Three three. Oh, three right. two, I guess um, which Celtic player made his debut when Celtic faced Hearts in the League Cup he needs, he needs to get this right oh fuck I think I know it I think we talked about this in the I last podcast as well me. Maybe. I've been listening to a few podcasts now though, so uh, I'm getting So that's been the three two game? Mm-hmm. Right, try and get a team that they're in. Fuck. <laughs> um I can't even think need some blank. Oh, is it Jota? No. James no, McCarthy. James McCarthy. Oh, oh, so I've won. Yeah. Wait till. Aye, aye, of course, aye, of course. Yeah, I can get four. I can get four, four, four out of five here, can I? Mm-hmm. Nice. Name the last Celtic player to score a hat trick against Hearts. Score a hat trick against Hearts. Mm-hmm. <gasps> I know this. 
it's not it's not what is it it's not what Martinbelly did he score hat tricks against them who's hidden belly Sinclair ah bastard <laughs> Tom, Tom Rogic managed a goal and assist for Australia earlier today in World Cup qualifiers, but which country were they facing? Oh, I do not have a fucking scooby. Um, I cannot think for the life of me. Oh Christ, I think we're at a, just take a guess, I think we're at a camera footage. Uh, I f- I, nah, I've not got a scooby. Vietnam. Vietnam. I fucking win, you can your buster. Yes. Class. Right, okay, I've won. We're out of camera footage, so we're going to have to just rush to be outro here. That means I'm up to three points in the table. Uh, I'm going to do the tie break too. Ah, oh, fuck the tie break. Route. Thank you, Matthew Duff, as always, for sending us that. We're out of camera footage, um, so we're going to go. But what a show. Cam, it was brilliant to have you back, so I hope you Thanks enjoyed for it. Thanks for having us. Yep. Um, 20 minutes as well. McGinley. Pleasure as always. And the next time we speak to you, it'll be the preview for the big one. The big so, one. make sure I'm tuning in. Cheerio. Cheers, guys. Cheers.